Hi, Brian Sizdek, Product Manager at Stolting, here again with video two in the series of using the Stroop Scoring app. In the last video, we covered logging in. Uh, if you've gotten through that video and have logged in, you will come to this screen. This is the home screen for entering a new record. We're, we'll be covering how to enter a new record and how to process that record in this video. At any time, you can go back to that password screen by clicking Log Out, Manage Password. Uh, as the warning notes, any unsaved data will be lost. So if you have a value entered and you choose to log out, when you manage your password and are done and log back in, that data is gone. Uh, so you don't want to do that unless you've already saved or uh, are okay re-entering data. In the sidebar, will be the space that you can navigate from tab to tab. We'll be covering each of these different tabs and what they do. This first tab is scoring information. Below this in the sidebar is where you will enter the examinee's uh, demographic informa information. Uh, name or ID, whichever you prefer. Uh, the location where testing is. Testing number. So. Uh, if you're testing on multiple occasions, uh, you can enter what occasion of testing it is. Uh, typically, you'll start off with the first testing. Uh, your name, the referral reason for testing, additional information. Uh, those should all be brief fields filled out. Then in the main body of the uh, scoring is where you'll enter the scores that you obtain from administering this group. Uh, at any time, you can also make the sidebar disappear if that's easier to work with like that, uh, especially for interpretation. The restriction on the raw scores are that they must be between 0 uh, and 200. So if you uh, don't enter a score, you'll see the error message displayed. Or if you enter, say, a negative score, uh, you'll get that same error message. So uh, we can just enter some data that we obtained. And of course, as is noted in the Stroop administration manual, um, all these scores are the number of correctly read words within the time limit. Uh, as you can see, once the data is entered, the table will be updating uh, as well as the plot. Highest education will be the highest level of education completed. You can select what is appropriate birth date, the restriction on this is that it must be between uh, 15 years of old of age uh, onwards. And you select that by clicking on the field and then selecting the appropriate dates uh, for birth date and test date. The age will be reactive so you can see Once the age is selected, uh, it will update along with all the corresponding fields that depend on that. Uh, now, in the tables over here is listed for each of the raw scores, the predicted score, uh, as is noted in the manual, that's based on the examinee's uh, education and age, and residual, which is the raw score minus that predicted score, and then T-score, which is obtained from uh, the lookup tables in the manual for the raw scores and then the calculated interference score. Below that is the plot, uh, that blue line, these are T-scores, so there's an average of 50 uh, with standard deviation of 15. Uh, so the plot will show uh, the range that is within the average range. Uh, significant is the lighter pink, that's plus or minus one standard deviation, out to strongly significant, which is plus or minus two standard deviations away for all the raw scores and interference. Uh, from here, you can view some interpretation of those individual scales, which has uh, textual interpretation. Now, this text dynamically updates, so um, depending on what you've entered for each of these fields, it will let you know what the interpretation of that is. So, for example, and we start with interference and work down to word raw score, which is typically the pattern of interpretation most people are most interested in. You can see this examinee scored a 76, which is uh, plus one standard deviation from the mean and significant, 
and it explains what that means. Uh, depending on the name that you enter for your examinee uh, will be reflected in the in the output for the uh, interpretation as well. So you can see that you can review that in this panel, um, provide feedback for someone in this panel. At this point, you can choose what to do with this record that you've entered. Uh, you'll select the Reports and Records tab. At the top is Current Session Report and Save. So the first thing you might want to do is generate a report for your, for your entered data. You have three different options for report format. Uh, as the help but as the help window is noting, HTML gives you a nice interactive format. Uh, PDF is nice looking, uh, static good for printing, and Word gives you an editable document. So you can select what you prefer. Click generate report. Uh, whenever an action is occurring that takes some time, the processing uh, monitor will appear. Uh, this generates an HTML file, which you can click and uh, uh, open in your browser, preferred browser. Here it will give you the background information. We didn't enter any in our example. Uh, note, it also tells you that a paper record form is required with each administration. This is just scoring software. This should not replace uh, using a paper form to administer the test. It uh, gives you a brief text uh, textually based overview of the test. Below that are the results overall, the T-score for word color, color word interference, and then interpretation of those individual scales as was seen in the app uh, window, interpretation tab window. Uh, so depending on what format you have, you could, you could choose to print this HTML, you might choose print from your browser, or you might just generate a PDF if you wish to print that and save it. Um, you can also save the data that you entered by clicking over here. So I'll click Save Data. Now this downloads a CSV file for me, uh, which is a type of spreadsheet file. Uh, you can open this with your preferred uh, spreadsheet software like Excel. Um, it might, depending on what what uh, you used to open it, it might format things a little wonky. You can see that here the test state's not listed, but when I scan over it, it is correct. Or I could just click to show that. The output format is going to be client name, the date, uh, 221, 922, and then this goes down to the second just to ensure that you're not getting the same named file for any uh, occasion. From here, what you want to do is create a dedicated folder for all your uh, saved client records, okay? Because when we see in the next video, you go to restore records, it will, uh, you can pull from just one folder that will output all the client records. So it shouldn't be mixed in with other files, it should be mixed in with reports. So I can just click File, Save As, and then find a folder, I might choose to name uh, some folder like uh, go to where I want to save it and I might choose like Stroop Client Saved Records. I can then choose to place that file that I just output uh, depending on where, where your files go. I can place it then in that Stroop Client Saved Records folder and just keep that for all my saved records. Okay, in the next video we'll see how you can restore those records and uh, further um, do some analysis.